Hey everybody, Professor Steins here, and today we're going to go a little bit over WordPress uh, like we've done in other videos, but this time we're going to fo focus on the multi-site network administration part of WordPress. So in previous labs we installed the WordPress uh, WordPress content management system, tinkered around with creating pages and posts, uh, building menus, and, and tinkering around with uh, themes and plugins to try to change the look and extend the functionality of WordPress. So hopefully by this point many of you are looking at WordPress going, wow, this is a pretty neat tool for creating a website. And it makes managing large websites a, a heck of a lot easier. So there's one last thing that I want to go through on WordPress, and that's the multi-site network uh, installation. So we're going to walk through how to install WordPress again from scratch, and then kind of extend it to be a network, a uh, multi-site network. Uh, this is the page on WordPress.org that we're going to start with, and you might want to read through it and just check it out a little bit, um, or this one rather. There's that one's from a different link at the bottom. So creating a network on WordPress.org. It's going to walk through some of the things that you need to read about before you begin. Uh, you can do it on an existing WordPress. Uh, however, I feel like kind of starting fresh is a good thing to do. That way, we don't screw anything up by mistake. So pretty much uh, to get started, we need to do the same thing we did before. Just come out to your HT Docs folder, create you a new folder out here to tinker around with. <clears throat> and I'm going to call mine Steins MU for multi-user. So Steins MU. And, and here's where we're going to want to move our WordPress code. So I've already un downloaded it, uh, installed it, and uh, extracted it. So we can just take the files that are in the WordPress folder and copy them over to our Steins MU folder. That way we can pull it up and start kind of walking through the install process. So localhost slash Steins MU should get us started with the, you know, the, uh, the installer. We want it in English. Uh, remember that we need to go into the database and create the database name and a username and a password. That way we can use it with our application. So when you get to this screen, you'll want to go back to your XAMPP, which you can get there just straight from localhost. Go up to PHP My Admin up at the top right. And this will get us to our database where we can uh, click new on the left to start creating a database name for this. So we're going to call it Steins MUDB and hit create. So it shows up in the left hand side. Uh, we also need to create a user account. So go back to the server root to the user accounts tab. And in here we can add ourselves a new user account and call it something like Steins uh, MU user. And we'll want to make sure to put this one across the local host and we'll use a really simple password like password. And that's all the changes that we need to make on this screen. So we scroll down to the bottom, just click on go and it'll make the uh, execute the SQL statement to create our user. We can click on the database tab here to uh, give the user access to our MU database. So we got to create the user, but then we also have to give him access to the database. And we can just give all the rights and click go. So once we've created the database account or database and the user account, we can go back to here. And our database name is going to be what we, we gave it on the left hand side. So that's Steins MU DB. The username it was uh, Steins MU user. We used password as our password. <coughs> and we're connecting to the local host database server. So we should be able just to hit submit here and run the installation. Uh, give it some kind of uh, default text here MU testing or whatever you want to call it. And create a default user account for our admin and we'll just give him password and we'll need to put in some sort of email address too. The email address is, would send you an email but since we don't have the the email server set up it's not going to do that but we'll, uh, this should get us going to, to get installed. So important to note that a lot of PHP MySQL applications kind of follow a similar install pattern to WordPress so keep that in mind in the future. So once we get to, once we kind of get that done and we get to the login page, we can go back to the create a network and we're pretty much here at the allow multi-site. So this would be our next step that we need to create. 
what it's asking us to do is go into the WP config file and open that up in Notepad++ and down at the bottom there's going to be an option here for that's all stop editing. Uh, we'll want to take this code that's here that allows multi-site and pretty much just paste that above our comment. Uh, that way uh, we can see <laughs> it work. So uh, once we do that, we'll just hit refresh on our thing and we'll log in with our admin account so we can see what the difference is going to be. And by default, it's not going to be much. Uh, nothing's really changed yet, but if we go down to tools, there'll be an option over here on the left for network setup. So if we click on that, uh, we're only going to be given one option here because we're using localhost. Uh, we can also set this up to use different uh, domain accounts. So, you know, godaddy.com or something. You could buy some domains, have your WordPress be installed on one domain, and then use a bunch of CNAME records to, uh, to change different IPs to your, or different uh, host names to your name using host headers, and then this thing would be able to serve out the, the right website based upon that. Uh, you really got to have a network that's under your control, a couple of domain names. If you look hard enough in Google, you'll find instances in which people are editing their Windows hosts file to, to make some of these changes so it looks more realistic on their, on their local machine without using real networking accounts. That's a little bit above what we're going to try to do here, and since we're just kind of focusing on local host, it's not going to give us uh, much of an option to, to change. Uh, the domain addresses that we're trying to use, or domain accounts, or or subdomains, host headers. You got to be careful. Uh, if you go to your network administrator and say subdomain, he's he's going to know your host header, not not subdomain. So anyway, uh, we shouldn't have to make any changes on this page. We could change what our network title is going to be, but uh, that's fine. We'll just click install and let it do its thing. We're going to have to make a couple other changes here uh, to enable the network, and one of those is to copy this code that's here and stick this in our WP config file. So we don't really need this one anymore for allow multi-site. I'm going to leave it in though, that way it still gives us the option, and I'm just going to put those extra settings down below. Now the other option that we need to make here is to edit the HD access file that was created. So we should be able to just highlight this code that's here, copy it, uh, go back to our folder and look for our .htaccess, and open that up in Notepad++, and just paste it all there. Uh, we are going to make a, have to, you're probably going to have to make a setting change here as well from the default that it gave you. Um, I wish I could tell you why, I just know the fix and how it works. But essentially it's having a, it's having a tough time using these uh, these file these these file paths. So the the quick way to fix it is just to take those off, like so, so that the the path to the file is not there, and then this will help our our mod rewrite. All right, so we made those two changes. Uh, we're probably going to have to log out and log back in again. So let's log out. Really want to log out? Yes, and then we'll try to log back in with admin and password. So again, kind of looks uh, pretty similar to before because we're still in the Stein's MU blog, but now there'll be an option up here under My Sites for Network Admin, and then for this one here. So if we go to Network Admin and go to Dashboard, uh, this dashboard is going to look a little bit different because this is just the dashboard for managing the network. So currently under Sites, we only have the one site, the Stein's MU site. But if we wanted to go and create a new blog inside our other blogs, or separate from our other blogs, if we were using domain accounts, we would just come in to add new site, uh, give it the site address that we wanted to use, give it a name that we wanted to use, uh, gaming rec reviews and recommendations, uh, something recommends, and we we'll want to make sure that we give it an admin account too. So if we use one that's in the database already, then it will come up and it'll be an option for you as you were kind of starting to type. It should give you that option. And we'll just click on Add Site. Uh, the MU site is a little bit slower than the normal WordPress install. Uh, plus my computer is acting a little bit slower today than usual. So that should have created our new site. Go to All Sites. 
and we'll see that this website is now in there as well. What's really neat too is that the administrator for the network is the one that controls all the themes. So if you want to go in and add more themes or use a different theme for a different blog, it's usually the admin that's got to start with that. And it's sort of, sort of like we did when we were just talking about one website. Uh, you can just kind of go in and, and hit install on a few that you like. Uh, maybe make them available so that people that, that want to work on websites inside your blog can use them. You know, again, you're just kind of the manager of word site blogs, and you'll be focused on trying to keep them up to date. So even though some of these are installing, uh, we'll still need to go into the network and enable them. I'm going to kind of hopefully wait for some of these to quit installing, or at least a couple of them to to go a little bit faster. Maybe I'll get a sip of water here by the time they finish. All right, one more. Cool, all right. So if we go back to installed themes, uh, we didn't actually enable any of these bef before, so we might actually need to do that. Um, bulk actions will just say, you know, network enable, and click apply. We'll just we'll just turn them all on. You know why not? Uh, you can also make some some changes if you really need to. Of course, you have to say that you really understand what that means. And if you needed to change uh, something, same with plugins works pretty much like themes. You have to install them at the network level, and then blogs inside of them can start using them. So uh, we should have two two WordPress themes now. We have the the, the plain testing one, and we have the gaming reviews and whatever one. So we'll open up the dashboard for both of those, and we'll go to appearance on this one, and say that we want to use the LF light, and activate that one for the normal administrative blog, and we'll go to gaming reviews and recommendations appearance, and we'll use one of the different ones, uh, preschool and garden activate. Cool. So visit the site. This is the start of the gaming reviews and recommends. Uh, kind of a default WordPress install, nothing too fancy. We'd still do everything like we did in the past labs to get this thing up and off the ground, manage the theme or whatever. Um, this one, of course, is going to have a different theme that came with it, whatever one this one was. And you'll still have kind of like a dashboard where you can go in and make changes or build menus and posts and, and content and stuff. So, uh, we've pretty much walked through everything that we need to install in the network and how it works. Uh, the other important part to keep in mind, yeah, we pretty much walked through all this. And this is where I got to the network administration link to talk about user access and some of the other things that are could be an issue in, in a multi-site install. Uh, for example, if we're under the network administrator and he's kind of the one that controls all the users, Currently, we are the super admin, <laughs> so we're super, uh, and we can see that we have access to different sites, so Stein's Immune, Stein's Gaming. We could create a new user uh, like Darth Vader, uh, darth.vader at darth.vader at mga.tdu, let's take the period out, and we'll try to add that user account. It's going to create a new one for us, and we could go in and we could try to make some edits to him. For example, it didn't give us the ability to change his password. Probably gave him a, a default password, sent it to him in the email, which isn't going to work. But we can go back in and set password for this user. Uh, if we go back to the network admin and users, we'll see that Darth Vader actually has no no access to sites, no no site access. So if we log him out and try to log in as him, Darth Vader and password, uh, there's, there's really not going to be a whole lot of option. I mean, edit user account, but uh, not really not really much else that, that can go on. So if we log back into our administrative account, uh, admin and password, and go back to uh, the uh, 
Let's go to the Gaming Reviews website and go down to Users. And there's our super admin. We want to add a new user here. And he's technically an ex existing user. So if we start typing in the name, hopefully it'll find it in the list. And we can say whichever role that we want them to have. Administrator has full access to change just about anything. Editor has a, a little bit less permissions about changing some of the settings and stuff, but a lot of ability to, to edit the site as a whole. And then basically subscriber has uh, no rights. Um, you know, may, might just be able to comment on articles or something to that effect. Can't create new stuff. So we'll add them as an editor just to see what that looks like. Click OK, add that user up. And uh, if we go back to now my sites and users, we should see that Darth Vader now has, you know, access to the gaming website. So let's log back out and log back in as Darth Vader. Password. And so now we should have a little bit more access into the Gaming Reviews website. And here we can make posts, uh, media pages, comments, uh, change stuff in our own profile. Uh, we'll have maybe have some tools enabled for us if we have some plugins or something like that. Uh, but we won't, make, we won't be able to make uh, major changes to the WordPress installation. And even then, we might still be a little bit limited in kind of what we can do with the actual article itself. Uh, and it looks like we kind of have everything we need here, but it just really depends on what you're trying to do. So uh, hopefully the video walks you through what WordPress MU is and what the capabilities are, what you can do with it, a little bit about user accounts and uh, what they can do, especially in the, in the MU universe. You, know, you do have that uh, super admin account that's kind of over all the other admin accounts. So, and then, you know, sites, uh, you just want to create a new website. It's, it's pretty easy. Just go into sites, uh, hook up your domain hosting or however you want it to connect. Clicking for fun. And maybe we want to give uh, Darth Vader Vader at mga.edu add site so Darth Vader is going to own <laughs> it's going to be an owner of the uh, the cooking website you can imagine Darth Vader trying to cook so we'll visit the dashboard for the site of course super admin will be there as well and if we wanted to change some of the themes or something like that of course it might be better just to, to log out and go in as Darth Vader and see now that uh, might not have access, full access to one blog. You know, my sites, these are the two blogs that Darth Vader has access to. Underneath gaming reviews, a uh, little bit less options, can't change the appearance because they're not an administrator, but under cooking for, for cooking for fun, uh, Darth Vader does have the access to go in and change uh, whichever theme it is that uh, that they might want to use. And, you know, make make changes as, as they see fit. So anyway, I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed learning more, a little bit more about WordPress. And if you want to be a freelancer one day and try to build websites for, you know, some extra scratch or something, this would be a great tool to use. Uh, you don't really have to write all the code each time. Maybe you just get really good at making, uh, you know, con configuring themes or making changes to themes and, and doing the work for people. There's kind of a lot to WordPress. It's a, it's a little bit of a learning curve. It takes some time to really get in here and know the menus and know where to click each and every time. So you really just got to get in there and, and figure it out. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Have a good one. Bye.